proudest day and the proudest time in the, the seat of a rally here. Because that day and that hour and those minutes, I got the butt between my teeth. You know, I really stood up and was counted and said, this is not getting away. I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me, what are we doing? I said, we're going for gold, Barrett. That's all we said. I can still picture that run. That was just the best, best run ever. Welcome along to Crunching Gears. Let's talk rallying, episode 22. Uh, delighted once again to be joined by Connor Edwards. Connor, you're, you're more than welcome along. Kevin, thanks a million. Appreciate it. Always love uh, joining in and having the chats about the rallying, so thank oh, you. Absolutely brilliant. Isn't it? So this week we catch up with Dave Moynihan, who tells about his Donegal experience. It's quite some story. We also catch up with, uh, look back at the Moonraker rally and uh, Lock Hall, and we speak to Patrick O'Brien, Aaron McLaughlin, Damien Toker and Marty Toner. And we also catch up with one of the new up-and-coming uh, hopes for the future, Brian McHugh, who's having a great year in the Junior Tournament Championship. But, Connor, you spoke up, you spoke with Dave Monaghan. I did, and before we we, we go to that, um, there was a really great chat and delighted to be able to speak with Dave. It was very kind of him to, to give up his time. He's still recuperating after the incident himself and Matt Edwards had on Donegal. And, you know, it's a testament to the structure and the safety features of you know the modern rally cars as well as the the plans and the that Donegal rally had in place for you know with regard to the rally rescue crews and everything that were able to get onto the stages so quickly but um I you know with, without further ado we'll let Dave tell the story of of what his Donegal weekend was like Dave thanks for joining us I'm delighted to get the opportunity to catch up with you after Donegal firstly how are you yeah, I'm okay Connor thanks um Thanks for having me on, on the show. Um, it's it's one I listen to on a weekly basis. Um, with yourself and Kevin, it's a it's a it's it's a fantastic show. You what what you put across and how you put it across. It's a it's a pleasure to be part of it. Um, no, listen, appreciate that, and thanks for the feedback, Kevin and I just waffle. It's down to the drivers and the co-drivers and the other people involved in motorsport. We want this as an opportunity for them to get their voice across. So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, here it's it's a it's a great a great a great um. A great process. It's 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 good systems to this. So, um, no, I'm good. I'm um, a few broken bones. So, I'm back in the hospital again tomorrow for a for a scan to see how the progress is going on my hip, um, and make sure the healing is in a, it's, it's going as it should be going. Um, Matt's got two broken ribs. Um, I think I came with the worst side of it. I've uh, I've twelve. Wow. Um, a broken hip, a broken bone in my hip, and a broken bone in my shoulder. So, um, I'm not back in the car for a while. I won't fit in tires for a while, but we'll get there. It's, uh, yeah. Broken bones at heel. Well, listen, it's great to be able to talk to you. And, you know, as accidents go, that you and Matt came out fairly unscathed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Here's a testament to the car. You know, it's um, the mo- modern technology they have in, in those cars. You know, like I've said to them, I wouldn't fancy having the same accident in an SR vehicle. So it's yeah. um, it, it's it's incredible what, they're, what the cars are capable of. What they're capable of performance-wise and what they're capable of to endure that size of impact. Um, it's a... It's a testament to where, where the sport is. Yeah, no, it's good to see and, and good to hear from you. Um, so just looking back at Donegal, so Matt was a fairly late entry uh, into the event. Um, how did you end up being paired up with as, as co-driver to Matt Edwards? Oh, he, um, I've known Matt this long time. Um, competed against him. I've been at the same rallies as him. Um, I admired what he's done in the sport and how he's how he's got to where he is in the sport. Um then obviously the end of last year we would have been um, probably well last year when there's nothing very little at home we took on the Pirelli contract to do the on event work in the UK so we were helping Speedline course or SL course with the on event work throughout the UK championship so obviously we're working side by side with Matt and then obviously he took the championship win in the Ulster so again we were doing the work in that event so I, I've known Matt this long time then he he had a, a quite a quite a, a program this year he had no contract for the for the BRC, he made plans for trying to make a plan in place for a tournament championship which didn't come to fruition. Um, so then I asked Jonathan Wells, who's the motorsport manager for Pirelli um, Motorsport UK, about utilising Matt and his services to try and bring a bit more, how would you say, um, a bit more feedback to the competitors um, in Ireland. 
So basically, Matt, Matt came across for Galway, West Cork, the circuit, Killarney, um, more as working with ourselves in Pirelli. So he'd do a reconnaissance of the stages um, pre event. In the morning, of he go and drive the stages. So we've been in each other's company you know, throughout the previous rounds. And it's been a running joke, to be honest with you. It was, it was very hard for him to, to be at the event and not competing in the events. So um, it's always been the running joke. And obviously, for Matt, he wanted a new challenge this year. He wanted to try and get to the Tamar Championship um, he, to step outside his comfort zone to win to the Lions Den where the boys had the experience. So how did it come about? It was a running joke for a while. And then in the circuit of Ireland, Matt put it to me that there was a, a possibility of doing a goal. Was I on board or not? And I said, you I'm not the right person. I haven't sat in the car. And at that stage, it was three and a half years. And work is, is very important to us at the moment. Um, especially having come through COVID and, and come out the other side of it. Um, we want to try and rebuild the business as much as we can and, and take advantage of what we can. So we've, um, but at the same time, I still had that grow. I, I, I want to be in a car to navigate. So I said, here, let's see where it goes. So then it, it grew legs. Um, Killarney came about and Matt said, look, Donegal is going to happen. Um, I'm going with you, if you're going. So I, uh, I put the plan to dead. And Amy, who, who are side by side was in the company, um, and basically if I could get the people on board to, to cover my end of the work side of it, then I was good to go. So um, here it was happening, it wasn't happening, so on and so forth. It, we, we got it across the line. Originally it was planned for a different car. Um, and then through nobody's fault, that didn't, didn't come to fruition. But at that stage, when that did fall through, we were so kind of heavily invested in the, pro- in the progress that we wanted to happen. So we looked at other options. You know, it even got to the point we're looking possibly going in a, an older R5 car or even a Rally 3 car just to get out, do a rally together. Um, Matt wanted to do an event, get to Donegal. And, and obviously Donegal's held in such high esteem by both of us. It was the one we wanted to be at. So thankfully Darren Gass um, made his car available. Johnny Crozier, I suppose, got everything together. You know, at that stage, Darren's car had finished the event in... Uh, Carlo was I think it was um, yeah Carlo and he'd send his engine back for rebuild um, to Orica so there was a whole process of getting his engine back because it only the engine rebuild had been completed getting it back getting it back in the car getting the car re-prepped because it hadn't been planted back out into the stone throwers which is still two weeks from now yeah but here Johnny and his lads um, did a fantastic job and got us a car got us a package and done it all happened yeah, and that's Matt's first time in the Citroen C3 as well. Am I correct? Yeah, it's it's kind of strange. He's driven. He's driven between, between his own competing and between the his Matt's always profession is he does a lot of driver tuition, car setup, and so on and so forth. But he'd never ever done any work in a Citroen, so so it was completely new, completely new. Yeah, and then Matt, I don't think Matt hasn't been competitive, especially on tarmac. What since Ulster last year? And I was yeah, there. Ulster. Obviously, he's done that. He's done a bit of work with different drivers. And, yeah. More over here now, so than it is in the UK. I think on the back of what he's doing with the, on the on the talent championship events, um, but he's he's last competitive. But he was Ulster. He's done some British historic stuff in the in the Fiat on gravel, but nothing on tarmac and nothing in the Rally Two car or R Five car since Ulster last yeah. year. And I, I was there at the Ulster, and he was phenomenal. He really was. Like it was a you know there was a heck of a fight at the front there with him and Oshin, and it was a you know it was brilliant to watch. Yeah, he, he was. Uh, considering he was that, yeah, considering everybody ups the gear for for Donegal it gets that extra competitive compared to the rest of the tarmac rounds was there any trepidation by Matt to enter in that battle or was he looking forward to it um I don't I don't know if he actually I don't know if he had obviously he's, he's a very competitive person and I always remind people you know Matt Ivers when Matt got his chance with the Swift car back in well a DMAC Swift car back in I think it was the Isle of Man 2016 um, he got the opportunity to go from the Evo to an R5 car for the, for the Manx International at that time. And I think when he got that opportunity, he tended, he dotted every I and crossed every T to make sure everything was as it should be yeah. to give himself the best chance possible at that event. And everywhere I've seen him since, he's carried the same system forward. You know, even his home event last year, the Cambrian in Clandudno, and you see Matt in after a loop of stages watching in car and processing in car and trying to refine a setup. This is from a man who's on his you know, stages he knows every square inch of um, from the rallies. He tends to bring that same system forward. Um, so, but like, like you say, Donegal is, 
it's it's the be all and end all of Irish rallying. You know, it's the one everyone everyone has built their whole year towards. Um, there, it's like it's like you hear people in, in other sports. You're trying to peak at the right time of the season. Um, in, in Irish rallying, Donegal is where you want to peak. You want to be on your game for Donegal, and obviously he had at the seat time. I, I don't think he ultimately had the ambition. He had the ambition. I don't think he had the expectation. He was going to get to the, the tick end of it as quick as it as it did come about on the day. Yeah. Um. But at the same time, he's competitive lad, and I I knew going to with him, you you're going to with a with high expectations of what's what's going to come. Yeah, and Donegal was quick from the get-go, like from stage one, everybody was on it at the, at the sharp end. Uh, and I know, what do you call it, Stan, out on the, st- on the first stage, it was, it was still drizzling and, you know, the roads were greasy. What was it, you know, the tyre choice like, especially with the Pirelli? Yeah, uh, here, it was, it was um, the whole talk, you know, from, from f- here, from Killing did his, his, his preview of the event, saying that Friday was going to be a, a game changer and everyone kind of knew themselves because they knew Friday was different to 2019 and even in 2019 the Friday stage went went against the character of Donegal stages um, they had an extra element of, uh, of change so there was always at, at um, that level of question mark over, over the Friday stages then during the recce um, again it was a lot of farm activity in those roads they were very high speed a lot of crests a lot of dips um, so a di- different nature road to what you experience on the traditional Saturday, Sunday, Donegal. So yes, you had your element of uh, possibility for, for, for someone making a, a, big, a big impact early on. But here we've seen all this year, you know, the Circle of Ireland, um, West Cork, Killarney, you know, Callum, Alistair, Josh, you bring Sam back into the fold. You know, yes, he hadn't competed in the World Car this year besides Monaghan, but he still knows the car inside out. You know, and, and, and you can't discount Gary Jennings, you know, Declan Boyle, there was, there was 10 cars that Cahan McCourt has set fastest times than he got in the past. You can't just go down and then he goes. So there was, there was a huge um, anticipation. Then, like you say, we had a, there was, we, we didn't actually recce on the Thursday. I committed to work that I, I would work the Thursday, but then everyone that did a, the Friday stages recce on Thursday said that, oh, the amount of mud is so compared to Tuesday or Wednesday was phenomenal. So here you just had to go with a gravel crew, what their guidance was. Um, it maybe maybe kind of helped us a bit because obviously when you go to dry, warm, abrasive, you know, clean stages, you're on the, the final tens of seconds instantly, and everyone's everyone's looking at that last bit. Whereas when you've got a little bit of uncertainty, maybe it does you know put a bit of equalization back into the small bit or that bit of hesitation. Yeah. Not so much for Callum on that in an instance, but it, it can happen. Yeah. And what he got six stages on the Friday, and certainly the second loop now really came to yourselves and you were, were fairly fast over the, the second loop and closed the day only 5.8 seconds off Callum you know so you really were you, you were in the yeah, fight from the beginning yeah yeah it was yeah yeah. yeah I, I, Matt had said he'd be happy to drop to give him 10 seconds of stage in the first loop yeah. um, and then we we didn't anticipate the the dips to be as aggressive as they were so the car did bottom up quite a bit you know quite quite sore on, on the on the first loop in particular and then obviously he refined the stage by stage thereafter um, but here to to go quick in the second loop and pull the gap back on Callum was was definitely um definitely encouraging to start day two yeah. and just five point eight behind and then go into stages where you weren't sure again whether did Callum have another gear to go you know when he went to stages where he knew more of the ground off so yeah. no he was uh, it was phenomenal yeah yeah and then Saturday into into typical Donegal stages not Cala fan of head etc now but again unfamiliar to Matt Edwards so. You know, I think you had a spin, was it, in the first run in Knockalla? Yeah, we had a good run to the first stage um, in Cairn Hill. Um, and then we went to Knock- we went to Fanad, which obviously was a shortened version. And we'd hoped for the longer version, but it was it was shortened. Um, and then, I don't know, I think we kind of had more banked in Fanad than we had in Knockalla, because Knockalla is, knowledge is power in Knockalla, you know, to, especially on the first third of the stage. Um you know, to know the lines, to know where you can carry that speed, it's 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 quite um it's quite impressive. Here we were lucky. Just um, I I still don't know exactly what did happen. It was a long right, a fast right hand corner into into a square, and just carrying that little bit too much speed part to the square, and we he lost the rear end. We ended up more square in the road, so it was three times um you know with three point turn three times reversing back and forth three times to get clear and knock his stuck in a ditch. So here we dropped the guts of 20 seconds and that, with that stage to Callum. And that, that more or less left it in, gave Callum a, a considerable lead um, after the first three. But 
again, a test with the Mac. He, he got his head down and went at it again the next loop. And I think we got it back down to 17, maybe around 16 or 17. And then Callum had a good run the last two stages and took 0.9 each one. And even Matt said, you know, and he commented on the event when you're coming out of a nine kilometer, 10 kilometer stage, one thing where he's taking 0.9, you know, it's, yeah. it's a testament to your training. It really is. Yeah. And and again, too, you know, with the unfamiliarity for, for Matt and, and obviously working with the Prellies and, and fairly abrasive, you know, tarmac in places. What was the tire choices like again? Was it difficult? Oh, to- yeah, that was, a, that was another lottery on Saturday morning because obviously um, coming from Killarney where everyone was on the hard component from the get-go on, on Saturday morning, as much as Matt has done in, in rally two cars or our five cars, Emma Pirelli, he'd never used the five compound, which is the hard one. So, and that, that was our call on Saturday morning because obviously it was a big loop. Um, we didn't know initially that Fanny was being short on the first pass. So the choice was made for based on, on your um, Cairn Hill and then two long stages being Fanny and Knockout. So you had to go with fives. Um, so here, that, that was, a, again, there was a, a question in his head of what the tire was going to do or how it would affect the setup. So it had a slight effect on the braking. Um, we, he had to just take, take some take some clicks off and the, for the braking that the car was over the road it more. So we had uh, an indiscretion with one chicane on the on Karen Hill. Actually, the first pass, the second pass. But again, here he's a he's a professional driver. I regard him as a professional driver, and he adapts very quickly to him. And there's never a drama. You know, even when it's it might seem as a moment inside the car, you get no feedback from that as though it is a moment. Yes, it may be discussed afterwards, but he's a thorough professional inside the car. It's a uh, yeah. It's, it's a it's a pleasure. Yeah. So you finished Saturday. You were seventeen point seven seconds behind Callum, um, but for the spin, maybe a knock alley, you could have been leading. Um, yeah, he was close. Yeah, it was very yeah. close. It was, yeah. There, there, you know, there, there, there wasn't much in it. Like I just took an overshoot or a, a, a whatever. Yeah. So uh, he was still nice to put the ten seconds back you because obviously we were twenty seven behind after the the first loop. So to bring it back yeah. down, you still have a bit of hope that you know, this the race isn't over just yet. So yeah, let's see where it'll go on Sunday. Exactly. So into Sunday morning, um, first stage of the morning, you see Devine's out. Is there any comments, any 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 words passed in the car, or is it just no? Keep no. I say uh, here there wasn't really. Again, it was a lottery Sunday morning because obviously you're going to get um, Garten as the first stage, and then go up to uh, we knew Glen was cancelled, so going to Atlantic Drive, which is bone dry. Garten was quite damp, and Garten is a lot of high speed with a lot a lot of big a lot of chicanes. So you have a lot of heavy braking for Chicane. So we made a conscious decision. We went with four softs to cover the dampness and then two mediums in the boot to cover Atlantic Drive in the dry. And obviously we came to the first Chicane, the marshes were out with the yellow flags. Um, and you had a, quite a bit of debris from Callum's car on the road. And then that carried to the next Chicane. Again, the marshes were out slowing you for the Chicane because you could see Callum at this point was struggling through the Chicane and the marsh were slowing you. So... Uh, at one point, yes, you thought, you know, Callum's in trouble, game on, but you're also very conscious that we've hemorrhaged a lot of time at the same time with the, you know, the slow behind Callum for the boys come behind. You know, yes, it was 25 or 30 seconds, but it's still, it's, it's not a lot of time. Um, yeah. And as it turned out, Josh took 12, so it brought him back into the race um, for, you know, in, in very quickly. Yeah. But here, again, it, it didn't, um, it didn't instill any pressure on Matt. He's been in, High pressure situations nearly all his career, you know, one thing or another on, on the on the line. So he was totally calm with it. Um, at that stage, I, I had a, a, a long void out of the car before the event. So at that stage, heading the day three, it was you know it was comfortable in the car. Everything was was fluid. It was it was working in the car. So there was no um there was no pressure at that point. It was a case of there's still a big a big day's running to do, and let's see where we go from here. We were looking forward to landing drives. We knew we'd have a tire choice taken for the. The second stage as opposed to the first. Yeah. But um, it didn't go our way. Yeah. So you got to Atlantic Drive. Josh, so, you know, at this stage, Callum's gone. Josh is 19.2 seconds behind. Um, What do you call it? Is there, what's, what's the, what's the, was there any discussion, a strategy or plan before you started the stage? No, or? it was, it was more the same. It was just, um, the, the stages don't allow you to take, you, you can't drop off 5% in those stages, you know, because, you know, a Josh Moffat or an Alistair Fisher on, on 10 tenths will just clean you if you give them 5% of your commitment to weight to them. Um, so it was it was the same approach. There was no um, there was no added pressure to be leading the rally or there was no less pressure to be trying to catch Callum. Um, it, was, it was just business as normal. You know, and 
uh, here it just we, it's it's well off me at this stage. You know, was the accident happened quite early into the stage. It was um, I think it was like forty seconds into the stage. The accident happened. It was the the first breaking point. Even at that, it was a very very slight breaking point for that corner where, where it happened. Um, and here it's it is what it is. You know, it's 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 the most surprising was it's the first rally where Matt Edwards has crashed out of in his career. Mm. Um, he's it's the first one he's retired from due to an accident in his career, um, and, and here it's, it's not Matt's fault. You know that's it's just part and parcel of the sport we're in. You know, so yeah. these things happen. Yeah, and again, testament to the the safety structures in the car and the marshals and the and the and the safety crews that were on the scene very quickly. To yeah, to... yeah, kind of, I I can't commend them enough. You know, um, there was three or four marshals. Um, I, I learned it afterwards. I, I have no recollection of the accident. It's um. I've seen the video that we got back from the after, this, after the accident, but I've been told by enough people at this stage that I see what happened. But there was three or four marshals I've seen that did their job impeccably. That you know, one secured the people who were trying to travel back up the stage towards the accident from approaching it. Um, one came to us and one slowed Alistair down. Then Alistair stayed with us and Gordon. Josh was sent to the next radio point to report the accident. Um, and very quickly we had the service of Low Rally Rescue. The paramedics, um, we were transported to Letterkenny General Hospital. Um, everything worked seamlessly. You know, it's you know, would the accident have been as severe if we hadn't hit the bollard? Probably not. Um, that that's that's a question that remains to be seen. You know, or would, would we've had the accident had the bail? We weren't aware of the bail being in a position it was in. Um, it wasn't in a rule book, um, and we were we were completely unaware of being a concrete bollard behind that bail, um, and. Here to hit a stone wall will probably do less damage to us and the car because it's bricks and mortar, whereas a reinforced concrete bollard has a a much stronger effect or impact on a on a car and body. So, yeah. but like I say, you know, I, I'm not um wholly anybody responsible. It's it is what it is. You know, the the damage is done, the accidents over, broken bones will heal, and please God, we we'll come back and try again next year to to challenge for it again, maybe. Absolutely. I, I can't imagine the G-forces involved because it was a fairly sudden stop, but it is great to to, to know that yourself and, and Matt are out relatively unscathed compared to what... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we won't make full recovery. You know, it'll, it'll take a bit of time, obviously, with, um, with, the, with the the bones of the air. There, obviously, there's no cast or there's no 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 bandaging for them. You know, it's, it's ribs and a shoulder and, and a hip and Matt's the same with ribs. So, But here, it, it'll all heal in time and we'll... Um, We'll come back again, hopefully. Yeah, brilliant. It's, it's obviously a positive when I did nothing for guts of four years, and you're now talking with you. We're doing something again, so it's reinstilled the motivation to want to do something again, which to me, you know, to me is a, it's fantastic. You know, it's and to understand like it to me, it was I, I'd always have thought I had a really good understanding in the car of the capabilities of the car and so on and so forth. But you know, it just I said to Matt at the end of knock out on second pass, we went fastest by whatever it was five seconds or so, and I said, yo, it just it defies logic what the cars are now capable of doing in the whole package your car tire driver what they're doing to cars now it's to me it defies logic even as a rally two car you know there's a level above that again you know but it's um it's incredible and again the, the safety of them that we endured the accident we did have the impact we had and we both came away relatively unscathed you know it's a it's a testament to the sport it absolutely is. And and Dave, genuinely, it was great to see you back, not only in the hot seat, but at the sharp end as well. So uh, delighted that you, you know, you you were here to to tell the story and, and let us know what happened. Yeah, very good. We'll, uh, here we do it again. I'm sure we will. Let's hear this. There's already people who are asking the question, when we're going to go again and, and hear from me. I've told Matt, you, know, it's, you can't come back close to Donegal and, and not go back and try again. So for sure, we'll, uh, we'll try and be there next June if we can. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Fantastic. Good Thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Connor. We'll talk to you again. No problem. Cheers. Good man. Uh, listening to Dave recount, you know, what happened to them at Atlantic Drive, it is reassuring to know the rally trackers, the rally rescue, the safety and uh, structures in the car all played their part. And, you know, under the circumstances, a positive outcome where both Dave and Matt got out of the cars with, you know, a few broken bones, but nothing worse or nothing, you know, serious. Mm -hmm. I, and the fact that they're so keen to get back onto the stages again, just, you know, I suppose I think, you know, you fall off the horse, you want, you want to get back onto it again as soon as possible. And that, that's all that is really, isn't it? 
Absolutely. Listen, very positive to hear that they're they're already, you know, scheming and planning to be back on the Irish stages again. So I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, potentially do we see Matt have another run at Donegal next year? I don't know, but it would be fantastic if um, if he was to come back and challenge again. For sure, for sure. Because like, you know, the performance them two guys put on over the Donegal weekend was, you know, up there with some of the best we've seen. Different, but, you know, so. Absolutely. Like it had been a little while since both of them had been in a car competitively. So it was great to see, uh, you know, there were so many firsts there between Matt on Donegal, Matt and the C3, Dave and Matt sitting together, you know, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. incredible. Genuinely yeah. was. Yeah. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, as we said before, Donegal's gone now <laughs> in the past. <laughs> we have to move on. Um <laughs> And then moving on, we had the Moonraker the, the weekend. I don't know, were you following that at all, Kevin? I was. I was watching it online, the Times coming in there. Fascinating to see, you know, with Keith Cronin and Mickey Galvin, you know, doing the warm up for the BRC. I was always going to be interested to see how the, the local guys compared, you know. And by God, you know, uh, especially Patrick O'Brien gave him a real good fight. But, you know, we kind of think that uh, the forestry has kind of fell away a wee bit this year. But in reality, you know, there is probably five guys there and good four wheel drive cars that are going to each event thinking they're in with a chance, you know, Patrick O'Brien, Niall McCullough, Conor McCourt, uh, Gareth Mimna, you know, uh, even uh, Michael in the Evo, like probably the car is probably outdated, but, you know, another outstanding talent. Like, so, you know, there's the the quality of them top drivers, uh, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that they could go anywhere and give a good account of themselves. Um, but unfortunate for Patrick to get the soft, I know a slow puncher on the third stage because he had beat Keith on the first and was you know, there, there about with him in the second. And then Keith then got the head of steam up and you know it was unstoppable then throughout the rest of the day. But still, you know, by the end of the day, it was only it wasn't a minute, it was 40 odd seconds. I think he took the one by Patrick to back up to second. Um you know, it, it has to be positive for the championship to show that these guys were a match for you know. You know, we always say Keith Cronin is one of the most naturally talented drivers to come out of this country. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, the other guys were all bunched in quite close behind there as well, too, you know. So. I know it was a fantastic run. And as you say, like it was 43 seconds, which is, you know, an overshoot or a stall or a slow puncture, mm-hmm. you know, especially in the forestry. So he, he really was. He was on it. And there wasn't that much between them. It was very good. And as you say, you know, the likes of Jordan Hone, them, Derek Mackerel, as you say, the Evo is probably, you know, a little bit past it now at this stage, but, you know, coming in ahead of, a you know, an R5 and that, so still challenging yeah. fairly strongly. And then Mickey Conlon as well in the Mark II, another good run. Yeah. And then, you know, like I guess the show last week, Ryan Caldwell, second, the two wheel drive in the Rally 4 Fiesta. Brilliant drive there, do you know? And uh, young uh, Kyle McBride was having a great run. I think it was up to about 11th overall, but then there's some kind of wee issue that made him fall back. But great to see, you know, this rally, you know, the Rally Academy, that, you know, the talent that it's bringing through, you know, we can't put enough praise and, uh, on it. But I suppose without further ado, we'll catch up with Patrick O'Reilly. Uh, Patrick, we're taking a wee look back here at the Moonraker rally that was on there at the weekend. Um, having Keith Cronin thrown into the mix, you know, along with all the other, you know, that's the first championship this year, you know, you have the likes of, you know, Niall McCullough, Jordan Home, Conor McCourt, you know, Gareth Mimna and yourselves. The depth of possible winners is very strong this year, but having Cronin there, does that change your mindset going into the event? Um, yeah, but it's, it's difficult enough going down there with, uh, as you say, the list of boys, and then you throw the British champion into the mix as well. So, mm-hmm. to be honest, it didn't really change much on the way down the road. Uh, I'd be going with, well, I'm going to win the event anyway. That's always in my main frame. I've never been any different. It'd be the wrong thing, I don't know, but <laughs> no, it was definitely it was good to good to see him there. Absolutely, and you know, after the first two stages, you had beat him on the stage, and you know, practically matched him on the second stage. Like that must be great for your confidence. Like, you know, Keith Cronin, as regarded, is probably one of the most naturally gifted drivers ever to come out of Ireland. You know, a four-time British champion. You know, he's uh, he has you know been on the world scene. He's been on the European scene. And it, anywhere he goes, he, he always shines. Yeah, very right. Like I grew up watching, watching him in the White Evo Nine. You know, it was it was pretty cool to be at the start of the stage chatting to him. You know, a sort of surreal moment. And then 
to come out of the first stage and the guys at the end of it to say that you've beat them through the stage, it was it's pretty surreal. It was kind of a pinch yourself moment, like, but <laughs> and then it was head down and go again for the next one. Uh -huh. So, no, it was definitely it was good to know that our speed's up there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then, you know, you know, disappointing then to get the puncher on the, the third stage. Uh, do you have to then change your mindset then? You know, do you start looking at it? Right, you know, I can't, you know, I need to take Chrome out of the equation. I need to get ahead of these other guys to, you know, get maximum points. Uh, yeah, to be honest, like, uh, the tyre started to go down. It didn't come completely off the rim, but it okay. just started to go down. And, uh, it was fifth gear in the limiter where we had the moment where we ended up back was down the road and into the shock. So it, was, it maybe got to the end of the stage before I started thinking about anything. Never made the championship. <laughs> you know? So it, it took a stage or two to, to so get settled, settled back in because yeah. it scared the life out of us. But yeah. no, like you said, it was uh, I have a bit of a wiser head then and think about the championship. Uh -huh. I, you know, I suppose in the heat of the moment, it's not easy. You know, contemplating never and getting all your ducks lined up again. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't like that we were trying anything crazy. It was just we seen Keith's line and it was the like, same line as I took myself, only the car just seemed to break away early and it was it was a very, very big one you don't get away with too often, to be honest. <laughs> and the, you know, to come back and beat the those other guys, the, you still have to go hard. Oh, for sure. Uh, L and, and Jordan, like they, they do not hang about. No. So it, no. it was, wasn't a case of all right, we'll go and finish second out. But yeah. they made us they made us work for it, so they did. Yeah. And like I would say that is probably a real good test of where your pace is at as well. That you know that you are able to come back from you know, it'd be very easy after getting you know getting a soft wheel and having that big moment for the head to go down and go, ah, bugger it, you know, um, it's not going to be my day. Yeah, you just that's probably come from working with the academy to be honest, you know, where if something like this goes wrong before I would have, you know, the head would have been down and oh that's it. But you know, you have to salvage what you can and like we come away with full points and second overall to Keith Cronin. It's, it's not it's not a bad day. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, that sort of leads on to my next question yeah, my next question. You're part of the MI Academy this year and like we've seen what that has done for other drivers. How do you feel it has improved you this year? I think it's helped, like in leaps and bounds, to be honest. Just more maturity and even small, small things that you know you kind of look past when you're doing it on your own, and mm. it, it just makes a difference on the stage, like you know with the nutrition and, and different things like this. So no, it, it's definitely it's definitely helping, and hopefully it'll help in the future as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, like you know, the team running your car, like you are a small family based outfit. And to be able to run a car at such a level, that you know, that's fantastic. And you're having your brother sitting with you too. It's a it's a lovely family yeah. affair too, as well, isn't it? Yeah, um, I did. we definitely made the work the week before the event. Uh, we had an issue with a, an ECU. Uh, I would say that was on the Wednesday night. And uh, we had to get the end of an ECU from uh, Marty, Mc uh, Marty McKenna from CNM Motorsport Sales. So only only for him we wouldn't wouldn't even have been at the event. So the boys were working flat out trying to get the car uh -huh. car ready for the event, and we got a test on the Friday Friday morning before we went down the road. So it was all sort of rushed, but it, it worked out okay. <laughs> and like we all know, rally and like uh, uh, nearly everything falls into place at the last minute you know like uh, if you're yeah. if you're ready a week before you're always thinking that there's something wrong nearly uh, almost, you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're that's that's not doesn't happen to you often <laughs> <laughs> so you know that now you're you know that has put you back on probably a better footing now for the championship is that the plan now for the rest of the year now uh court forestry coming up now in, the, in august isn't it i think I remember Ah, yeah, I think the next one's Jim Walsh. I think the next Jim first day event is. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, to be honest, uh, we had thought maybe about the British Championship, but it just seemed to get off a good start with this, and we kind of fell into it, till a championship battle with the likes of Jordan and stuff. So it still would be, it's something you know to win. To win that would be massive for me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're still looking at a few rounds of the British Championship towards the end of the year. Look, our speed doesn't seem so bad when you when you compare it to, to Keith. We're not too far away, so mm -hmm. we'll keep an eye on what Keith does next week. And 
I don't know, we might venture over then. <laughs> yeah, because like Keith, there was no point in him coming and driving around there yesterday. He was coming there to get his speed up. So like yesterday was a, a true representation of where his speed is. Yeah, I just asked him out straight. As one of the start of one of the stages was, you know, are you taking the hand out of us or are you, are you pushing? And he says he wasn't hanging about. Like, okay, he wasn't having massive moments, and and neither was I. Mm-hmm. And he just says, you know, he he was pushing. So that that was nice to hear. He's a genuine guy too. He's he's a hundred percent Keith. So mm-hmm. I I would take his word for it. Yeah, I you know so like that has to give you because like, we we do tend to get you have very limited time because you know with the budget and everything else. You haven't done that yeah. many rallies altogether, and like you're only in your what third event in the school. Day. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like you said, the budget, the money is the problem. You know, <laughs> if you had all the money in the world, you can rally all you want. But <laughs> no, it's uh, I think being around, you know, as you say, my family business, being around the cars all the time, and, and being on tests and stuff, you know, it helps there too. So yeah. you have much time to do these things, you just have to get in and go as possible. So <laughs> that seems to work out okay. Ah, you don't have time to think about it. You just go and do it, really, isn't it? And that really it. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, just get the car ready and away you go. <laughs> <laughs> Worry about it next week. So, like, uh, you'd like to see out the championship, and then yeah. probably, you know, as you say, try and tie in a few rounds of the BRC. Uh, would it, where would you see your pace at if you wanted the BRC? Would you be like you always talk about? You know, you go to every event hoping to run. Would would the BRC be the same, or would it be? To gain the experience in that level, um, just like I said, to be honest, it's I never really had time to, you know, I could go and do a year doing this, and then next year I'll know. So now, to be honest, I'd be going well, like, hey, you have to be realistic, but I still have in my head that I want to win. Uh, win. That's that's mm-hmm. clear. Like, you know, I'm not going there to make up the numbers. So yeah. being realistic, if you're in the top. Five, it would be a fantastic result, but mm-hmm. yeah, if you're not going there to, to, oh, to drive around. get around. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, no way, not a chance. Uh-huh. No, but I suppose like that is what makes the difference between a winner and somebody that is just making up the numbers. You know, you have to have the, that mindset that you, you know you want to win because, like, you know, fit or, you know, driving yes is a huge part of it, but the the, the preparation and your mind is as big a part as the preparation in the car. Yeah, for sure. Like if you were going going at the weekend, thinking that Keith Crone's going, and you know uh, if I get second, it'll it'll be okay. That uh-huh. you're beat before you get there, before you fire the car up, you're beat. So uh-huh. there's no point going like that. So fantastic to hear there from Patrick. And you know, as we said before, I think that the uh, Rally Academy, the differences with the him this year too, as well, the way he approaches the events, and you know, as I mentioned the other guys earlier as well too. Um, also this weekend we had a lot ball. Uh, Connor, I don't know where you fully in them events. It was. It wasn't up there, but it was following the results coming in, and uh, you know, great win by Aaron McLaughlin. And shout out to William Neal, somebody who we know ourselves. He's a photographer, and and we would often bump into in the stages. So it was great to see they got the win. And then obviously the the Toner brothers are out there competing against themselves. Um, Damien and Martin, like luck, all really does suit them. They, you know, that sort of greasy, slippy, tight you know, technical stages there really do very well. So the two of them, Damien second and uh, Martin was third. And then we had the Moffats not competing against each other, but we had actually Sam and Josh sitting in the same car together. Yeah, that, you know, it's not brilliant. You know, you know, we forget these guys are still lovely rallying, you know, the big boot one, you know, Donegal or whatever, you know, Galway and all, you know, different events they won this year. But they, they still want to go out and slate about and <laughs> enjoy it. You know, that, that's fantastic to see. It is. And the perfect car, they were they were both competing in the Starlet, which is probably well suited to mm-hmm. having a bit of crack in and in, in around Loch Gull Park. Yeah, because, you know, the, anybody that knows Loch Gull, uh, the, the country house up at the top of the hill, there's a, the big sweeping corner there. And Sam has a lovely drift around it. You know, it's just, um, it's a... Um, for and again, it loves to drift the car. That is the ideal corner. It's a big long corner, and it goes it goes downhill. And he had the most perfect drift down. I have to say, you know. Um, but once again, our man on the ground, Joe Sharp, was the man with the camera, and he caught up with the winners, Arne McLaughlin, and then he spoke up to then Damien and Martin Tona. Arne McLaughlin, the winner here, the Loch All Country Park today. That's nice. Aye, it is indeed. It's always nice to get the one now. Uh, the boys, the boys were going hard there in the in the 
the two the two donors were going higher than the it was, when we come into stage uh, stage two there was only 1.9 in it but it started to dry up a wee bit then you know when we got the we got the grip down and we started to use the the torque and the and the grip on the four wheel drive car and uh, away we went then yeah, so that's your first proper stages rally one, tarmac stages? I suppose it is alright, uh, it's a wee tarmac stage there, it's a great wee, great wee event, it's nice, it's tight and it's narrow and all, but uh, it's a good wee, good wee run now. And you're happy with the car? Oh aye, everything was going well. We are doing a bit of fighting with our man Ronan there, we wanted to tighten up the suspension a wee bit, but he told me, I think he told me he did it and then he didn't do it, and it, <laughs> it, it worked anyway. <laughs> Yes. That's good. So what's your next event now? Or what? Down Rally now is the next one on the Northern Ireland Championship. Oh, right, so yes. we'll be at that now in a couple of weeks' time. And that's, 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 all, that's all our championships finished up then for the year. Just pick and choose a few then to finish it out. Congratulations. Well, well done. Thanks very much. Damien Toner, another good day's rallying? Aye, oh, good day. As good as we we're, we're expected. Um, second overall, anyway, is a good result. We're lucky to be here. We've been the last days there, but we got here, I know. Very good, and second over now is great, the four wheel drive cars, hard to compete with them. Yeah, I know, that we skipped the rain now, now just he pulled, took lumps of time out of him, so there's no point in even trying. It's just constant two wheel drive. So and the car's going well for you? Ah, going the best, yeah. yeah. The top was stuck in the last days there, but oh. worse than that. Alright, we're here, I know. That was a scary moment, was it? Oh, lucky to be here, but <laughs> happy to be here. Eh? Right, and what's the next event now, or what's the plan? Eh, uh, maybe go to Down, maybe, or else us to one or the other, see how you're on there. Congratulations, well, well done. Well, thank you. Hi, hey, Marty. Another day over. Lock all country park. Third overall. Hi, good day. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's happened a couple of times, today, but oh, it's good now. Um, first time back out of new engine there. So first time out was oh, more than happy. Some job. Second doing the life. Third overall. See, so you're a good battle, your brother. Hi. Well, look at him. He's funny zagging up in front of me, but oh, look at happy. More, more than happy. So, um, two rallies in a row and two podiums. So. Very good. <laughs> and what's the next event now you plan to do? Or? Uh, I may go to Cork maybe. Like down to Cork 20. So I'll try it. See other targets. Very good. So you're happy with the car now after today? Yeah? Oh, hey. Right. Well, I'm more happy with your slam. No, no bar at all. So just a wee, uh, wee bit pressing. Oh, hey. Right. <laughs> Handy fixed. <laughs> what happened to that? Oh, I had a bail just and the ski in there knocked better. But, oh, it's not as grand. But I uh, live at home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers, well, guys. Thank you. Thanks once again there to Joe Sharp for catching up with the guys from Lockwell. Um, finally, then we catch up with Ryan McHugh. Um, Ryan hasn't been even been rallying a year yet at this stage and has tucked it, looked up to water. I suppose, like, you know, as we discussed in the thing, it's in his blood. <laughs> yeah, well, it's in the DNA, all right. You know, between the the brother, there is a preparation specialist and I think his was it his uncle was rallying in the yeah previously uh, as well. Yeah and then Dick and Dick and Gallery of the Monkman's his cousin as well too. So you know <laughs> with all that floating about <laughs> he couldn't go far off. But you know the the we Civic is in this year, you know, the junior class is a fairly basic standard carries out and and achieving some fa- fantastic results. Um you know hopefully now you can finish off the championship. And, you know, all going well, he has big plans here for next year. So we'll let Ryan tell his story. So, Ryan, you, you're a late starter when it comes to the rally end, but I suppose it was always in the blood. You, there was going to be no option, really, was there? No, not really. Now, uh, with Uncle Joe and uh, Cousin Declan rallying, um, it was never really an option. It was always kind of <laughs> to be the known thing. So, uh Neil took up working at the car, so <laughs> someone had to someone Somebody. had to try and uh, their their hand at it in the house. So um, no, it's 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 been a it's been a real uh, roller coaster now of a start. So we've uh, we've had a fairly good start now. So we're uh, happy enough it, now with the start. I, I like, and I suppose with with Joe and Declan both, you've probably been traveling the country since you were no age anyway, going to rallies. I well, I probably um Joe was kind of finished now before I kind of started. It was would have been two thousand and eight. Joe finished uh-huh. really like so. Um, he ha- he's he done a couple of rallies in the Peugeot two hundred five, but he hasn't really done that many now this last couple of years. But mm-hmm. uh, in terms of Declan, I've uh, probably been going to rallies since I was about I don't know twelve or thirteen of them. Like so, it's uh-huh. it's, it's always yeah. kind of been. 
Yeah, and like we all know what they can gather and do behind the wheel. So if you think uh, even if it, uh, some kind of rubber has talent, you'll do well, you know. So. Aye, well, aye. He's a, he's a talented lad now. That's I'm sure. about it, so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, your brother um, as well too, the preparation, like the second to none. You know, when you think of the likes of Gary Jennings and uh, David Kelly and one thing or another, you know, the car turned out, it's always very well turned out. Oh, yeah. Um, the amount of effort that, that, that them boys put in before a rally, like even there before Donegal this year, it was next to none, like, and then I'd be stuck in the middle of it. So <laughs> it's uh, uh, myself and Declan's goals. But uh, no, the effort that the Neil and the boys put in is, is, is unbelievable all year, like, and and like it's a real credit to them to be fair what what they're doing like the not one car in there any bother and don't all there like so it's, it's a real credit to them you that, know? that speaks volumes doesn't it so like you yeah know, you finally got behind the wheel last year and you know you couldn't have got any closer to home the harvest last year was based in Donegal town and uh, the stage has almost went past your door so i suppose yeah. it, was, it was too big an opportunity to miss really wasn't it ah look we purchased a car during covid um uh, I don't really know. We just purchased a car and never really with intentions of doing anything. And uh, then kind of Donna was, we heard that Donna was trying to set up a rally around here. So I was like, well, sure, we may try and do that one and get things on the road. Like, so I was glad now we done it. We had a really good day that day. Um, goes for our first rally. Didn't really know what to expect. Um, there was a shakedown stage on the Saturday. And... Uh, just as, as it was good, like from the word go, like we hadn't really a great run on the shakedown, but it's kind of just getting getting ourselves better. And you know, we had a real good run then on the on the stages on well, Saturday. It was, was it? Uh, and uh, Sunday, yeah, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, the shakedown was Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah and, so. you know, to come away with first in the juniors and your very first rally, <laughs> it was. I, you know, I would say you were absolutely over the moon with that result. Oh, it was just, it was a special day. Now, just uh, I didn't really know what to expect, like and. I'd say Dad and them was just probably expecting the big gets a finish at Hall. Like, um, mm-hmm. I'd say they were they were watching in the field at one place, and uh, I'd say they were glad to see me coming round. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And like you know, you're like obviously the ambitions there because for this year you planned it was the Tarmac Championship you 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 were you had in your sights to do the juniors and that there like that's you know it's a big step from doing one rally to put yourself at that into that level. I look, we, we kind of sat down and uh, we was kind of weighed up our options and we knew that Neil was going to be at all uh, all internationals. like So it wasn't really going to be much of a, it'll be kind of a less cost of a thing, you know, to go to the rallies and just slide in along with Neil as, as just to try and keep the cost down, you know, a wee bit. So mm-hmm. uh, we decided we would do, do the tarmac. We didn't even decide what we were doing all the rounds. We would just decide we'd start and, and see how we got on. But um in terms of Galway, we were, we were fastest on the first stage and then we broke down on the second stage. So, mm-hmm. um, oh, look, it was kind of dis- disappointing, but uh, we knew that the that the, spe- the, the speed was there from mm-hmm. we were leading after the first one. So we kind of said, you know, we'll go to West Cork and see what happens. And, and look, we had, we had a good enough day in, in West Cork. Um, Jason was just very fast. He's been fast all year, like, so... Uh, we just, I don't know, we were a bit slow in the morning and uh, we got we got going then in the evening and uh, it was 0.7 going into the last stage and uh, unfortunately I kind of made a bit of a couple of errors towards the start and damaged third gear. We probably lost a bit of time, but mm-hmm. now hey, what with the pace that, that we're like, on at the minute, it's it's good. Like, you know, it's, every man's pushing every, every, everybody on, you know, it's good. Like. Uh, you know, isn't that always the great thing about, you know, like going to somewhere like West Cork and not knowing where you're at, but coming up against some guy and both of you is pushing each other, you know, it allows you both to develop as, as drivers as well, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Like, the even, even the crack you'd have there before the stages, uh, Darrell Donovan there too, like, he, he's very fast. Mm-hmm. There's Robbie O'Halloran, like, there's 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 six drivers there that, that could win the juniors every day they're out, like, you know, uh-huh. so you have to... You have to really be kind of on it from the word go. Yes. Um, Del Neve too has done a couple of rallies this year, but he hasn't really. I think he's doing that other championship, but has also been very fast and he showed that too in Donegal there. So absolutely, absolutely. And then you know you went to the circuit Ireland too, and you you done the two days there as well too, which is. Ah, uh, we had to do the two days there. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, it was a, it was a real experience doing them stages like um the Friday. It was a Saturday Friday rally up there and uh, uh-huh. Friday stages and like they were run backwards and on the Saturday. But just to get doing them stages was uh was a real uh, eye opener to what the rallying's like in Northern Ireland. You know, mm-hmm. it, it was real good stages. You know, and uh, I definitely will go back. It was a well run rally. Like, I, like you unfortunately, know none of the boys came there that weekend, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I was the only one there, but like so, I knew I had to go there to try and make up time for what what we've what what we lost in Galway, I suppose. That's for sure. And like you know, as you talked about there, you know, the classic stage, stages like Cairn Castle and Glen Dunn, like two bigger stages in, in in rally in terms of Northern Ireland, you wouldn't find. You know, like it's it'll you know it'll, it will improve your driving and the loops. A stage is two be three. Every time you go out, you can see where you can make improvements. You know, you can yeah. uh, amend oh, no, it, was a, it, was a, it was a real well-run rally, and like uh-huh. them stages, is uh, it's class. Like there's yeah. no other word about it. I'd say that I really like that Glen Dunn stage. I would say it was one of my favourite all year. Yet, you know, yes. so mm-hmm. uh, it was a real challenging stage. It was fast, and bumpy. It had everything. Like yeah, uh, everything. And then you know, you went on from there. You 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 know, you got your maximum points there. And then down to Clarney, you know, another one, you know, you're going to, you like to your Moles Gap, all the classic stages again. Didn't start well, but then, you know, you, you kept that, you put the head down, it would have been easier to lose the head, but no, you put the head down and charge back up again. I, when you, when you, we, uh, my own error, but two, but maybe six mile, not even three mile into the first stage, we clipped a rock. Um, I don't know how many texts I got. Uh, during the week before that rally Declan Brian Hoy just telling me to keep the car in the middle of the road this weekend and I don't know just as on a right hander before the tunnel just caught in just too much just and clipped a rock but oh look it could have been worse like we just had to change it on the stage it happened at the start like so right. uh-huh. there was no point in going on like so oh well, look we lost we lost about maybe four minutes maybe three and a half four minutes Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, we were only beat by just over four. So, ah, we we still tried, you know. Ah. But again, you know, that's a, something else that you had to learn, you know, to keep calm and not lose the head. You know, this year is all about, you know, getting this experience that you've never had before, either. No, it's 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 all different, like, but just back to everyone around me, like, just yeah. giving me advice and trying to help me all the way through, like, and just... Even Dermot there used to sit with Joe, like just giving me advice, trying to help me all the way, and Declan as well, and even Joe, like just all them boys trying to help you all the way around. You know, it's 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 real good to have these boys around you. Like you can't buy that experience, like absolutely, absolutely. And then you know your home event, then Donegal, uh, again, you know, and you know a real battle. You only I know with uh, the stage has been lost one thing or another. He's only got was it three stages or four stages on the Sunday? Yeah, we got Garton in, in the morning, and uh-huh. uh, we got a, a rude eye opener on us. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dylan kind of took, I think he only took fourteen seconds out of us, and then we knew Glenn was gone, and we went to Atlantic Drive, and then it was gone. Uh-huh. Um, we went back to service in, and uh, put, we were on too soft a tire in the in the morning, but uh, we put on new tires and went back at it again. And um, we went out then to Garton on the first uh, on the first run after service, and mm-hmm. it was gone. And I was like to Declan, "It's just like it's, it's just not, <laughs> not, not happening. Like there's nothing we can do here if we're not getting the stages. and nothing we can do." Yeah. And we went into Glen. Just we just said to each other, "Look, we'll you know we'll try and take if we can take over five here, it, it can be race on." And we ended up taking taking ten of them, and it was just like it was just going into the last one. It was like race on, but. Uh-huh. Mickey Joe then was coming behind again, and he was he was only like two seconds behind us, like so. It was uh-huh. it was real, it was real uh, tight now. But that's all you wanted to. You don't want some one person running away with it. Like it was yeah. fair racing and uh-huh. saying like um gonna just getting off the last stage was just kind of trying to p- compare your times to the class eleven F boys. You know, if you're a wee bit far too far away, you'd know that that's not going to be good enough. But Ah, oh, look, we 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 come out on top and then now and we're delighted now. Yeah, absolutely. You know. um, and like you know, your first time competing in the rally you've been going to for you know for years. Uh yeah. it's pretty special, you know. So oh definitely. Like um I suppose anytime I went to the rally with Declan, it's kinda never really went his way. Like no. so <laughs> uh it's always kind of been a rally that he's 
Uh, never not really had the best of luck, I suppose, you could no, say. No, <laughs> not the best of luck. And uh-huh. Rose trying too hard every year and mm-hmm. been in a two-litre car, you know, a lot, trying to race the 2.5 men. Mm-hmm. It was leading a couple of Fridays, but he never really made it to Friday evening. Like, but mm-hmm. I'll look at it. had some run there the this year added, like, you know. absolutely. You know, getting so close to the Darians and all this year, like, yeah. And like, you know, anybody that's seen him on the stages just knows it was full commitment from Friday morning right through, wasn't it? You know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, he's, he's something else now to be fit to step in there and do that. Like, I consider the, the like a seat time he has compared to a lot of the other guys as well, too. Yeah. You know, so. Well, I, I know Kevin Gallagher, he doesn't really get much seat time either, yeah. but mm-hmm. they, these boys are just natural drivers. They can that's get a, in and do, that's it, for sure. do whatever that's they want. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, the championship now, like, um, if you want to chase the championship, you're going to have to go to Cork and probably Ulster as well with the double points there as well. Yeah, yeah, well, we're seven ahead now, but uh, I'm, I would assume Jason will be going to, to Cork, like, so it'll be, it's really mm-hmm. race on now. We need to get a finish, in, a good finish in Cork. And uh, I suppose good Ulster as well. But, uh, oh, okay. At the start of the year, if somebody said to me that I'd be leading the championship now, it probably would have been like, no, nah, no way. Like, so, mm-hmm. no, or whatever happens, happens. And, and to be honest, getting getting Donegal was, was pr- pretty special. So, um, and, and you know, you know, ideally, you'd love to wrap up the championship and all that. And where do you see, you know, would you like to try the, the list maybe before the year's out or? You know, is it maybe consolidate the budget and see what you're going to do next year, or what have you any thoughts? I will. We'll, we'll just probably finish out this year now, just at the tarmac. And uh, I we've kind of been talking, and I wouldn't mind trying to get into an R4 car next year. Uh-huh. Um, I will see see what the budget's like there, and uh, possibly maybe try the junior BRC next year. So, um, mm-hmm. I'd, I'll just see what kind of budget we can get gathered together and, and see. If not, I'd be trying to take an R4 car to maybe to the tarmac next year, all depending on on how the this year ends. Like absolutely, um, you probably need to need to have won something before you get up into them cars. Probably would be the best way to. Uh-huh. Well, you know, like the the start you've had, there's no doubt that there's talent there. So you know, I think you'd be a fantastic addition to you know either the tarmac or the the BRC. Like we've seen the success, you know, the likes of Eamon Kelly or Kyle White or Johnny Mulholland, then guys, you know, if you can if you can race the guys here, you can go and race anywhere. Yeah, well, that's true. I uh like what Eamon Kelly's doing there at the moment, it's it's, it's really it's mental stuff and then to step into an R five car and rallies and, and be fit to be not that far away from them top boys, like and only a couple of rallies done. It really shows what speed he's growing by going to the BRC and Mm-hmm. To the big competitions like so um no it's 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 really where you need to be to get the speed up like and get the experience that that was lovely to catch up with ryan there that will start wrapping up now episode 22 connor thanks again for taking the time to join us and uh, can you please if you're listening can you please comment rate subscribe like share all those things they all make a huge difference you know uh just what i should say just a huge thanks to everybody as well too that's listened over the last few weeks. We have been number one in the Irish charts. You know, it's kind of mind blowing to, to see it. You know, and uh, it's just a credit to every, each and every one of you who's listening. It's really, really, really appreciate it. So, until the next time, take care, speak soon, and bye. <laughs>